Hello, my name is Joy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to share about a story that is very close to my heart. This is a, a personal experience that I had over the past year and I thought that it was very important for me to share this. At the beginning of 2022, I was not myself. I used to get very many headaches. I used to feel unmotivated to do anything i didn't feel like i was enjoying my work or the things i was doing and i wondered what was going on at first i thought it was burnout which which to some extent was actually true but there was something deeper to that there was something at the core of how i was feeling for a while i i dismissed the thought that i might be depressed because i was like it's, it's not possible because it's not the first time that I have been depressed. I, have, I used to experience these depressive seasons and most of the time, all the time, I would pull myself out of those situations because I'm the kind of person who is used to having people come to me for, for guidance or for consolation, for, for a good word that will lift up their, their heart and make them feel better through school and growing up i i was the person that people came to when they were at their low moments so i found myself in situations where if i was going through something i had no one to share with so i had to learn to get myself out of sad situations or out of any depression in case it ever occurred what happened to me last year is nothing like I have ever experienced. It was really the worst thing that happened to me. I started feeling this way towards the end of 2022. And even when I started 2023, I was feeling so bad. I was down, I was having panic attacks and constant headaches and I didn't really know what was wrong with me. There was a time, I remember one time I went to, to the hospital. I had a very, very high fever. I could not do anything. I actually struggled to walk into the hospital when I went to do a checkup. I went to the hospital. I tested for, for common diseases, malaria, typhoid, infections, but none of that was actually in my system. The results were telling me I was okay, but I was not okay. And even the doctors could see it. One of the nurses gave me this magic pill that would reduce the temperature and it actually did it work for about an extra two hours the temperature did not change it was after that hospital experience when i went back home and started asking myself what is wrong with me why can't i do anything why don't i even have energy to walk myself in and out of the hospital after i fell sick i remember i i went to my instagram and to my twitter and I made an announcement, I, I told my audience that I was going to take a break and I was going to be off social media for a while. At that time, I was still not sure what was going on with me. I thought maybe now that I'm not feeling very well, I'm not going to be able to put out any more content. I It's best that I tell people I need some time off to regain my, my energy and get back into the vibe. I put an announcement and I said I was going to be away for two weeks. Little did I know that two weeks would turn into a month and a month would turn into months and almost a year. After I made the announcement that I was going off social media, I that is when I started, that is when I actually had to stop lying to myself and really find out what was wrong with me. So I started reading about depression, I started reading about the signs and what causes it and all these things and it made me feel even more depressed that all the signs I read about and all the symptoms, I, I was experiencing everything. I had to tell myself, you know what, this is here and I have to find a way out. But I, I really struggled so much because I, I I hated myself even more because it took me time and I thought I was going to just take two weeks off social media but I, I ended up taking such a long time it made me feel 
bad that I wasn't creating any content, that I wasn't working with any clients, that I wasn't out making videos. I felt even more depressed. I feel like depression is one of the, the worst things that can happen to anyone because it is something that can take away someone's life in, in such a short time without even anyone noticing. I don't even know, but I'm quite sure my family didn't even notice that I was going through a depression because it was easy for me to smile and project this kind of person who is okay to people around me, but I was really not okay. It was only those who were really inside and really that close to me who figured out that I was not okay. I really hope that this video will give hope to people who are going through a similar situation, who are feeling like they don't want to live anymore or they have no motivation to live anymore, that, that things do get better. But you have to want it, you have to desire it. I know there will be a time when you do not want you when you when you don't have the will when you can't cause yourself to want to leave there was a time when i was before i before i left social media i was scrolling through twitter and someone had posted a photo of of this beautiful family at, at the first at the first glance when you look at this photo you see a beautiful family i think they were at a beach and a couple with their children and everything was good until i read the, the caption that was attached to it and they were saying that the dad or the husband of this family had had committed suicide and it was found out that he had been going through a depression for a couple of months and people were saying in the comments that no one ever imagined that he was going through something because he always looked happy he always looked like the most lively person around when i when i saw that photo i started asking myself i started wondering am i going to end up the same way is is no one going to notice that i am struggling and and get the help i needed it made me feel sad to imagine that my life could end up in the same way but i thank god that i did not end up like that it, it's a silent killer and i feel like depression is not just depression it's not just a mental issue it's not just a, a psychological issue it's not just an emotional issue i feel like it is a, a dangerous spirit an evil attack from the pits of hell itself it's 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 what the enemy is using to enslave so many young people so many people in the world who are going through things that they cannot explain and the worst thing about depression is that you feel like you cannot share with even the closest people around you because you feel like they will not get it. Somehow, this feeling convinces you that I am the only one who understands what I'm going through. No matter how much I share or whoever I tell, I don't think they will understand me. It, it takes love and it takes a lot of work to be able to get out of this. I'm going to share how I actually overcame this situation and I hope that this encourages you and motivates you. One of the reasons I wanted to share this is because my pastor, Apostle Moses Mokisa, says that this is where this is the first time I heard this and it's it's a scripture in Revelation 1910 and towards the end of the scripture it says the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy the interpretation or the way i learned the scripture was that if you testify of something jesus has done for you and someone hears it if they take those words or your testimony with faith then the same thing might happen to them i i hope i understood that right but that is what i believe that i i I, I told myself that once I was feeling better, I had to share this because if my story can encourage someone that there is healing in, in the near future, then I believe that they can have hope to hold on till the better days and brighter days have come. When, when I was going through the motions and uh, I was having panic attacks, I was... I used to think panic attacks were not for Africans. I used to think it was a thing for white people, but 
and it happened to me and i could not control my breathing i felt my chest was very heavy i felt like my heart was going out of its place i couldn't explain what i was feeling but i, I later came to learn that that's what a panic attack looks like when i was going through that for for a couple of months i got a job in march and after i got the job i i told myself there is no way i'm going to be successful at my workplace if if i'm going through a depression i i told myself i'm going to do anything and everything i can to get out of this place because i really needed that job remember previously i had stopped working i was not creating content so i was not attracting any new clients the past client i was working with i had the contract had ended so I had no money i had to find a way to make a living i applied for the job the job came through i got it and now i was left with this thing i wanted to heal i wanted to get healed so that i do not in any way make the people who hired me feel like i'm not going to do anything or be of value to them i remember talking to a few friends of mine and i asked if they could send me contacts of therapists or counselors or anyone I could really talk to about what 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 was going through my life and I received some contacts I tried to reach out to some of these people and they we exchanged messages but for some reason we were not able to meet for both the two people that I got I was not able to meet them for some reason our timelines did not align well that we did not meet for one of the the counselors i just i stopped talking to her because it felt like we were not agreeing then the other person even though we could not meet we agreed that we would talk on phone that she would check in on me every day in the evening she would ask me how my day was going how i was feeling she led me through a series of questions and, and guided me through some conversations that would make me feel better at the end of the day i did that for about a week and in the moment when it was happening i felt better but when the calls ended and i got back to my room I felt this box closing in on me and I felt like it was not working. I needed something that would bring me permanent healing. And that is when I talked to, to Mali. She is a Zona pastor at Worship Harvest. I, I talked to Mali, I asked her if she knew any Christian counselors because I wanted to, to make sure that I was getting the I was getting help that is inspired by the word of God because within me I was sure that the only way I would get healed was God. However, when I was going through my phases, when I was depressed, I, 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 I tried reading the Bible, I tried listening to a lot of worship music, I did so many things, but it was not helping. This might sound like God was not working, but I believe there was something that he wanted me to experience. Unfortunately, Mali was not able to get me a number of a Christian counselor, but she told me, hey, we have this event. You can come and check it out, come and experience it. And I was like, I will, I will come. But I remember telling her, if I come, I want to get healed. There is nothing more that I desire than getting healed. I want this feeling to stop. I want the sadness to stop. I want the pain to stop. I want it all to go away for good completely because I had done different things and I felt like they were all giving me temporary solutions. On the 1st of April, I attended the Integrate Gathering and when I, when I went to the event which Mali had invited me for, I, I remember being late because I had had a work event on Friday. So that Saturday, I, I arrived at around 10, yet the event had started at 6 a.m. So I felt like, oh my God, I'm, I've, missed, I've missed out on the good parts. But surprisingly, it's, it's, it's amazing that God had really set me up so well for what he wanted to do for me because when when i entered the doors of, of, of that church in integrity apostle moses was 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 
he was doing an altar call. So I told myself, do I go now or I go later? I was like, I, I liked to, to, to accept altar calls, you know, when, when I've listened to the word, when I, when I feel like, you know, there's something that is boiling in me and my faith has been stirred up. But at that moment, I was like, I should go. Something forced me to take that step. So when Maddie had gone to get me a place to sit, I, I told the gentleman who was standing next to me, if Maddie comes back, tell her I'll be at the front. And he told me, you're going to receive salvation. I'm like, yes. He didn't even wait for me to finish the service. He just pushed me and walked with me and took me at the front. And for some reason, I knew that when I reached in front there, something would change and when i got there it was like someone released like everything that was inside of me came out i started crying uncontrollably and the things Akmo was saying just made me feel like, like like this is the moment i've been waiting for and i remember him him saying that whatever you're going through Jesus is going to take care of it. And I was like, yes, this is what I want. This is what I came for. I mean, being a Christian and growing up in a Christian home, I have said the salvation prayer, I don't know how many times, because the first time I remember in my mind, I was about four or five years old. And after that, I have done it several times because you feel like I've, I've sinned a lot this week. I, I need a cleansing. I mean, don't judge me. I did not understand the gospel and salvation back then like I do now. But I know many Christians do this. I mean, you keep getting saved and saying the, the salvation prayer over and over again, hoping that this time you're going to get clean. But I mean, you do the thing once and receive Christ once and you don't have to do it a thousand times. So that day, I remember crying so much. My head hurts. I said the salvation prayer and I was taken to to our to a place where they where they take contacts of the people who have gotten saved and just to keep in touch with you, connect you to a family, connect you to uh, someone who's going to call you and check up on you and keep in touch with you so that you so that you are plugged in. So that was the beginning of my healing. After I say that salvation prayer. On 1st April 2023 that's when everything changed after that I never missed any Sunday I religiously went to church because I knew I had to remain plugged to the source of peace to the source of joy so I made sure that I was in church every Sunday what I can say is that it's not only the salvation prayer that saved my life but but when God wants to do something, he, he will put you in places and situations where you cannot escape from it. I know this has been a long video, but the truth about how I got healed from my depression is Jesus. Bringing Jesus into my life and reading scripture from a point of understanding that God loves me and he wants me to be okay helped me to come to the understanding of my real identity this is my personal story and this is how jesus healed me and i wanted to share it so you know that god is real jesus is real and there is nothing he will not do for the people that he loves i mean he put me in the right places and enabled me to meet the right people for exactly what he wanted to do in my life and i'm so glad that I get to serve him every day of my life. So I really hope that this video encouraged you. I hope that you feel you feel hard, you feel understood, and that you know that tomorrow will be a better day. So I know this has been long, but thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sticking by. And I pray that this video achieves the purpose that God intended it for. So thank you for watching and 
Have a blessed day.